Okay, good morning. It is July 3rd, 2017 in the Lunar Cycle Misam Sota. And this morning, I'd like to make a little tutorial about how to rattlesnake proof your yard. But before that, I, I'm visiting the family pet hospital here off Mayor McGrath. They are taking care of a dog named Morgan who was bitten by a rattlesnake yesterday. So I'm hoping to go in here and uh, get some time with Morgan and talk to the vets about what to expect when you have a, a cherished, beloved family pet that's bit by a rattlesnake. Yeah. <laughs> so what happened? We were sitting on our back deck and uh, Barb started screaming. I was trying to figure out what's going on and there's a snake in the backyard. Yeah. And the two cats took off. The two female dogs went, got probably 10 feet away and then they took off. The male dog, of course, he goes and tries to pick it up. So you saw the snake before the, the dog yes, even got bit. Yes, the cat bit. jumped out of the bushes. It was the perfect storm. It's like you said, where it's hot, we just watered all the bushes and it came from under uh, the hot cement. It's looking came, for a cool came, spot. Yeah, and yeah. happened yeah. to encounter the cat that was under the bush as well. That's why the cat shot out of the bush like a bullet. And that's why <laughs> I saw the snake. Yes, the snake jumped onto the culvert and uh, it was coiled and ready. And, uh, you're, it would have ran away, except we blocked it. We uh, we kind of stuck no the fence, but not snake proofed oh, Right. Yes. <laughs> okay, so I'm here with uh, Dr. Jacob. Atzabel. Atzabel. Jacob is with Dr. Jacob. Is Dr. With, Dr. Yeah. Jacob from the Family Pet Hospital on Mayor McGrath. Yeah. This is one of the three veterinary clinics that I recommend taking animals to if they get bit by a rattlesnake. They have some experience with wildlife. So what? should somebody expect if their dog or cat gets bitten? Well, it, it depends on where they're bitten and uh, how successful for this rattlesnake their strike was. Right. If it's just a grazer, it may look like just a little rash. Mm -hmm. uh, if it has penetrated the skin, or even if the venom hasn't penetrated the skin, it is extremely painful. Right. And uh, if it doesn't, penetrate the skin it'll swell like crazy yeah and uh, the venom will actually typically kill the flesh and so even though it doesn't look like much initially it will probably become very painful in a hurry right so it's it it really varies a lot and and so we haven't actually lost any dogs that I can remember although we've seen lots and lots of rattlesnake bites over the years like some years I think we've had up to a dozen uh, other years just one or two it all depends on the year this year seems like it might be a busy rattlesnake year yeah um, how many have you seen this season uh, I think four or five so far okay yeah something like that right yeah so so how long how long if a snake gets um it gets a really good hit and gets envenomated yeah it's um, probably paralyzed immediately. It's, it's going to be paralyzed, yeah. and it's going to be uh, here. What do you, well, how, how do you treat it? What do you do? Well, because because uh, you don't have anti venom for. Well, sometimes we do, okay. but but it is extremely expensive. Right. Uh, and so most times we end up not using it. Right. And uh, because there's also potential side effects from the antidote. Yeah. And so we would only consider using it if we think we're losing the battle actually yeah so we use a lot of uh, supportive care you know, you know treat it symptomatically right so if it's if the dog is paralyzed uh, inflamed we use uh, pain medications anti-inflammatory always yeah. uh, intravenous fluid like you know the expression Dilution is a solution to pollution. Right, so, right. So getting them really uh, it, fluid loaded is important. It's, it's a hemotoxin, right? Yeah. So it's coagulating the blood. Yeah. yeah. So it's it's the intravenous fluid that kind of breaks that up. Yeah, that intravenous fluid is a big part of the treatment for sure. But also, uh, actually, antibiotics. Like if there is venom under the skin, we usually end up seeing severe infections. Right. So getting antibiotics on board early is important. Um, and um, yeah, so intravenous food, pain meds, antibiotics, uh, those are, are definitely important. Anti-inflammatories, depending yeah. uh, whether you're no, non-steroidals, in some cases steroidals. Um, and then we usually do like a 
clotting profile, like to see if, if there is a clotting abnormality with the blood. Right. Uh, we'll usually uh, do a little bit of blood work to see how the rest of the organs in the body are doing. Yeah. And um, sometimes they're hospitalized just for like half a day. Uh, sometimes for three or four or five days, depending on the severity. Yeah, so it, it can be, they can be in and out within hours or they could be here for almost a week. It really depends on the severity. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. Okay, so how is how is Morgan doing? Uh, Morgan is not my case. Okay. And, uh, so I can't really talk about it. Okay. It's, uh, <laughs> Dr. Min and, uh, so you'll, you'll have to, to talk to Dr. Min and, and the owners. <coughs> no worries. What about the new... Um, uh, what do they call it? A vaccine, right? There's a new rattlesnake vaccine yeah. from the states. Yeah. So is. you've been administering that? Yes, in some cases. Okay. Uh, it's it's a little bit new, and most people they're they're not worried so much. But I would say if you live on the west side of Lethbridge, and if you go in the coolies at all, uh, especially this year. Uh, having a rattlesnake vaccine, or if you know there's been sightings and where you go, right. it would be very smart to get the vaccine done. It's not expensive, and uh, how, mu how much is it? Uh, yeah, I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> it's, it's pretty much like the cost of a normal vaccine. It's like a, right, hundred hundred bucks, hundred fifty. Yeah, somewhere a little bit less than that. I don't actually remember okay. exactly. So. Yeah, um, but it's it's not that bad. But it's it's gonna it, it potentially like it, have you treated a dog? Probably not. That's been vaccinated and then bitten. We haven't had that scenario yet. Okay. Because yeah. The vaccine is it's it's new. it's really it's just yeah. here this year. Yeah. I know that. Yeah. There is the manufacturer actually suggests that even with a snake bite, it'll still start producing antibodies immediately. Right. So we haven't used it after a snake bite, but there is actually actually some literature uh, promoting and supporting that you can give it after the fact but of course it would be way way better beforehand right yeah. good good yeah. okay cool thank you so here's morgan morgan going home today no one more day okay morgan sit sit oh. hey morgan morgan so you got bit on the nose, hey? Yeah, that's right. Oh. Got it right oh, got bit right on the top of the nose. Your throat was swollen. A little bit swollen still. Oh, yeah, I can feel it. Oh yeah, it's gone it's down a lot. Yeah. Hundred percent done. Oh, but he 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 seems health, healthy and happy. Yeah, it's his yeah. blood count. It's, it's not coagulating. Yeah. So. He could internally bleed, so we're going to keep him one more day here because they can do a vitamin K shot. Right. And because uh, I can't tell if he cuts himself, I can tell if he's, but I couldn't tell if he was bleeding over here. Inside. One more day, I'll have to do. Hey, buddy. Oh, lucky dog, hey. Yeah, yeah lucky that he didn't. Um, he, that he, he that we noticed or that we were there, like he yeah. just gone and. I don't know. He's pretty good though. He he was uncomfortable. He showed us right away he was uncomfortable. What did, what did he act like when he got bit? Uh, did he cry? He, did he? No, no. Just he a just yelp. he started like as if he'd been bit by a bee. Like he a started, bee um, yeah. hitting the bit spot. Bit of a yelp and then hitting the spot and rubbing. Yeah, that's all he did. You would have never known he was bit unless I saw the red. I would have never known. Right. And you saw the snake. I was. Yeah. But he acted like normal. Yeah. He did, other than just kind of swiping at his nose. But he wasn't in extreme distress. He wasn't. So when when they swell up like that in the throat, are they at risk of as, as, asphyxiation or? They, they, they can be potentially, but not that much. We have never seen it with uh, snakes, mm -hmm. uh, but definitely we have seen it with uh, bee and wasp and like other creatures because right. those ones they they more cause an anaphylactic shock, whereas with the snake it's gonna be more of an envenomation. Right. But definitely it's a possibility. It's looking good. Yeah. Good so healthy. One, uh, <laughs> come yep. come home tomorrow, hey Morgan. Petunia and the vipers. I wonder if Petunia has ever met a real viper. If so, this would be the place to do it. Um, this is I'm in Riverstone right now, and I'm going to show you quickly how to rattlesnake proof your yard. It's not hard and um, there's a little bit of expense to it, but it's a lot, 
lot less expense than having your pet bitten um, from a rattlesnake bite and God forbid having your child bitten from a rattlesnake bite okay so it's 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 a much preferred <laughs> route to go I have a residence here on Stonecrest Point in Riverstone who have followed my recommendations to the T as to how to rattlesnake proof your yard if you want to see this residence um, you just take this walking slash bicycle path around Riverstone and, um, and you'll come to it. This is what it is. Um, hardware mesh. It comes by several different names. Some people just call it a chicken wire. Some people called it, called it a, uh, a welded mesh. Um, but I call it hardware mesh. It, it usually comes in about 36 inch rolls. 36 inches high and if you want the best price in Lethbridge go to UFA uh, United Farmers Alliance I think it is on the north side UFA sells it um, they got it in big rolls so they can if you measure your fence line they can cut it to the exact measurement of your fence line and uh, you don't have to worry about buying smaller rolls at, at Home Depot or Home Hardware or what have you um, you can get it exactly cut to shape to the size that you need. And all you have to do is trench along your property line, along your fen existing fence line, trench in a couple inches, uh, sink this in, you know, this deep into the ground and have the rest of it above ground, right? So you wanna have close to three feet, close to 36 inches. If you can have 30 inches above the ground, that's beautiful. Um, zip tie it to your ex existing fence line. It doesn't take much, you know. You can go to the dollar store and buy um, a bag of zip ties for a couple of bucks, dollar or two. Zip tie it to your existing fence line, trench it in one to three inches underground. Snakes don't dig, but they will use existing uh, rodent holes. So if you have, uh, uh, if you have uh, ground squirrels or voles or anything like that that have dug under your fence line, the rattlesnakes who use those holes. So go in a few inches, zip tie it to your existing fence line, and this is this is perfect how they've done it here. They haven't had a snake here uh, for a few years. When they first moved in, their, their very first year living here, there was a rattlesnake, a female rattlesnake that was living under their drive pad here on Stonecrest Point, and it actually took us about a week and a half to uh, to actually grab her because she was she would just jump under the uh, the drive pad every chance she got the the uh, the rocks the gravel had sunk and so she had a little hole under there and and we warned the family here we told them um, this was a female under your drive pad chances are there's going to be males kind of like lurking around to check out check out who it is like they can smell her right. Um, so best you do this with your fence and we gave, we gave instructions about how to do this wasn't followed immediately um, within a week one of the dogs at this residence got bit and uh, then right away they put up the snake fence and they haven't had a problem since and it's been years now so I highly recommend this if you're concerned about your family if you're concerned about your dogs and you live on the edges of the coolies or the farm fields in West Lethbridge this is what you need you need to strap some of this hardware mesh on the outside outside only of your fence um, put it in to the ground a couple of inches doesn't take much and zip tie it to the existing fence and you're safe you're gonna save save yourself for sure um, thousands of dollars if there was a bite and all the trauma you know you don't need that and you want to feel safe you want to have your dogs outside you want to ha allow your kids to be in the backyard and play and have a good time we can coexist with these snakes but we have to be smart about it and this is one of the, one of the steps we got to take is for those people who live in the snake areas um, Snake proofing your yard is what you need to do. Now I will show you the problem. There is one problem with snake proofing and that always comes at the gate, right? So here we have the gate for this house. They've done a pretty good job. They've zip tied part of the gate here. 
um, they have an open end here that they can use now it is possible for a snake to get in right here right this is always the issue the gates the gates are always going to leave some kind of access but the chances for a snake to get into your yard through that gate is very small compared to the chances that exist if you don't do this at all all right so take heed <laughs> take heed and um snake proof your yard it's not that expensive and uh you know it's just gonna it's just gonna um help things here in terms of being able to coexist with the snakes normalizing the fact that we live with them and we're going to continue to live with them that's not going away all right these snakes have been persecuted for more than 100 years by the newcomers here by the settler population um, and they've survived it certainly they're going to survive our new uh liberal age where we're not killing snakes all right so we are going to be living with them and if we want to do it safely there's ways to do that we have to um, recognize the reality of where we're living you know people buy properties along the coolies because the coolies are beautiful they're beautiful because it's a wildlife area they're beautiful because it's a kind of a wilderness and if you want to live next to the wilderness you have to know that the species of that wilderness are going to trickle into your your uh your space right and one of those species is going to be the prairie rattlesnake you can do easy steps to uh to ensure that you're safe in that situation that's all so hopefully um hopefully ufa gets a lot of business <laughs> and um yeah hopefully we have no more no more pet bites or 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 human bites this season it's uh i don't expect that completely i expect some more pet bites but let's try to minimize it get the information out there share this video so that people can see it and and know what to do okay thank you